You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Twisted After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Twisted After Show. You asked for it last week, and we're giving it to you this week. You got it on the episode again this week, so you might as well enjoy some Katy Perry. Thank you for joining us today. This is the AfterBuzz TV After Show for Twisted. This is Season 1, Episode 18, Danny Interrupted. I'm your host, Stephen Lemieux, joined today, and I'll get into our guest in a moment, but our lovely co-host, Lena Green. Lena Green! And our amazing and lovely co-host, because you're just like, just, you're Erica, just one. Lena number two. It's Lena Erica number Jager, two. Don't say that. <laughs> Whatever. And Twisted fans, we have a special treat for you today. Um, she's had roles in Criminal Minds, Revenge, Baby Daddy, and many more shows. She's a graduate of the Lee Strasberg U New York Institute of the Arts. And she is just a wonderful talent all around. We have Brianne Howie in studio with us today, or you Yay! may know her as Whitney from Twisted. Hello. Sexy Whitney. <laughs> One of our favorite characters. Sexy Whitney, is Sexy that? Sexy Whitney. <laughs> Thank you. We just put adjectives before the name, you know? Oh, yeah. That's so, like, ama you. amazing Lena. Oh, great stop. Erica. Stop. He's not this nice. Guy. Guy. He's not this nice. <laughs> Go goofy Steven over here. Um, yeah, so first off, what were your thoughts for the episode? I'm gonna just go ahead and say it. This is the best episode. Aww. I would agree, yeah, too. Everything flowed better this episode, and, it, you know, I could follow it easier, and I knew, I didn't know what was going on, but it was a lot more exciting. A lot more adventurous <laughs> in it. it I didn't know what was happening, but it was good. You know, I, you don't want to know what's happening, so I was like, okay, wait, Charlie, I knew he was gonna be crazy. I yeah. saw it all along, <laughs> yeah. but... Yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess we guessed a lot of what was going to happen. You were, you, I called a few things that happened. You yeah. called a few things. I was like, yep, we were right with the daughter. Oh, with yeah. Tessa's daughter and stuff. So. Well, nobody really expected that, but we still don't know. Yeah. And right. we, it, it looks like a baby swap, and we'll get into that soon, but okay. I'm, still yeah. I'm still banking on like something related to... Charlie. I, I am. No. I At this I, point... I, I was... No. Because we don't know it was a baby swap. Okay, we'll, we'll get to right. that. Right. I think you're so. putting Charlie, he's got his hands in too many things. Yeah, Charlie. Right Char th that's what I was thinking watching the episode. I was like, Charlie's all over the place. He's a lot more imperative to this to the um, Se season the and yeah. you know so I was just like I think he's really going to be like a, a pivotal part of what's going on with Danny and stuff so, so we'll see. I really like the episode it was a, it was a really stable episode it kept my attention yeah. which um, the first half of the season really did a good job with that yeah. I liked it the second half you know it'd be it have its times where it'd kind of be surfing Facebook then I look back up and be like oh and then it'd be surfing Facebook <laughs> I? I mean I, you did. I'm watching Twisted I'm like the average teenage girl all right. Yes, you, you are, are Steven. <laughs> You're such but, a tween. I know, right? Yeah. Hashtag Joe and Danny. Yeah. No. Um, I ship you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> but no, I really liked it. it. It had intrigue. It had mystery. It, it had a sense of urgency, which is what I've been looking for for so many episodes now, yeah. in that you didn't know if um, Charlie was going to go off <laughs> on Joe. You didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> And, you know, it gave him that creepiness. And I feel like if we're going to have a series based on a sociopath, it's great that because they turned Danny into not being that, mm -hmm. they well, really uh, needed Charlie to be introduced. I just wish they gave us more hints at how messed up he was before this episode because it kind of seemed like a deep end he went off of yeah. as opposed to a gradual incline into insanity. Yeah. But great nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, I th they kind of show Danny kind of going unraveling in this episode too, so we don't know if he's a sociopath still. He's still, you know, I killed my father thing. Please do not do that. This <laughs> do I not do that. that. <laughs> and so we see both of them kind of meeting each other there with the whole sociopath thing, but I'm glad that they showed Charlie just right out being who he is. He's crazy. 
And I'm glad with the, his old attack on Joe that that was just right on the yeah. forefront. We didn't have to I guess. didn't want that to be milked. Oh, I yeah. was like, please don't milk this mm -hmm. out. I wanted him to show his true colors to Joe. Because yeah. I was like, Joe, you need to get away from him. Don't go over yeah. there. I didn't think she was going to show up. I thought it was going to be Danny. She comes up. I'm like, no, Joe, right? Well, <laughs> Twisted Relationships Tips 101. <laughs> if you go to like a boy's apartment, Look behind his bookshelf to make sure there's not like not ten year old like, pictures what of is you. This? <laughs> a shrine. <laughs> a shrine. It was like right, but I would have saw that because my mom's a detective. I would have oh saw that. Just look, I would be like looking around and someone's <laughs> Oh, hey, okay. a picture. What is that? Well, you'd think no. Danny would have seen it because that that's that's classic juvie um mm. thing, like prison kind of thing, where you right. hide it. You only have so many places to hide in a cell. Yeah. So so much about everything. <laughs> Personal experience. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> I killed my father. <laughs> Don't do it. Um, and I was a Julie for it now. Um, no, but like, there's Shawshank Redemption is one of my favorite movies of all time. So you gotta you gotta go into like that, hiding behind the poster, hiding behind mm -hmm. any flat surface that's against a wall. So when you look at this, I feel like Danny should have found it before, but now seeing it, it just kind of was. It was opening the door, opening the dresser per se, on how absolutely <laughs> crazy Charlie is. Yeah. yeah. And Thank you. It. It reminded me slightly of like Helga's shrine in Hey Arnold, in a way. <laughs> like, oh, mm. Old school reference. I don't Twinkie. know if you guys get enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. At least, at least somebody in the room got She's it. She's trying to be I nice. <laughs> I was Helga for Halloween two years ago. So. Oh, oh, okay. That is amazing. Okay. I'll high five you from across no, the table. Good. He's like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 One person understands me. <laughs> I'm so <sorry>. misunderstood. <laughs> you know I need, to, I need to find a friend with friends and just steal their friends and then frame their okay. dad's murder. Oh, anyway. He gets, oh, yeah. Um, yes. yes. So, Charlie, let's go ahead and yeah. knock out everything with Charlie because we're kind of diving into it because he's the most interesting part of this episode along, I mean, there's other things, but of course he's the, like the driving force behind this episode. The focal point. Yeah. I think with Charlie's character, uh, first of all, I want to say it was funny how he took out Joe's picture to call her. <laughs> <laughs> Joe. <laughs> He stroked it a little bit. I was like, like oh, something's not right, guys. And then me and Erica both pointed out how Charlie and Danny both look like some Johnny Depp wannabes. Like, they're both like these Johnny Depp type characters. And I love like, Johnny Depp. Like, with the Depp. grunge. It's the hair. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, when Charlie, they oh went my gosh. a screen, like, they went really close on him. And he had, like, this Johnny Depp moment where he's like, <laughs> no, it's like this is Charlie, and then this is Charlie. Dish this is Charlie disheveled. Oh okay, my gosh. I gotta go. I, I, I gotta go. regain my composure. God. I'm good, guys. I'm good. <laughs> Nobody can even see you. He's doing this little hair thing, guys. I don't know. There's why. literally a scene in the episode where he yeah. goes like that and looks right at the camera. I, yeah, that's what I but said. But that's his character, and it's a sociopath. Yeah. I get it because it's all about himself. And I mean, he took a door to the door to the face. That was intense. Yeah. That I was, couldn't even watch that. I was yeah. like, don't do it, don't do it. You know what I was thinking? I'm still wondering, is this the whole motivation behind him coming? Is to really steal Danny's life? Is there nothing else behind it mm. but that? Is like what I'm wondering. I, I, I know we can't, you know, you can't give away anything, but is that is that just it? He just wants Danny's life? Well, you got to think. You kind of know, like, you know, this. That I know the insane yeah. mindset. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, Erica. I mean, I look at I look at it from like looking at it from a writer's perspective. This is a boy who's like 17, 16. Um, he's had a messed up childhood, so he's coming out of the institution, and he he wants what he has never had. So he's taking into Danny's shoes to really get that relationship with these people. But the problem is, teenagers never think things through to the end. So what we're seeing in this episode is all his plans are going as they're supposed to be planned, but he didn't really see the end game. Like, he doesn't know that he could be with Joe for so long without with lying to her, without spilling some truth. And that kind of happens quicker than it would have in, like, if we had five more episodes left. Yeah. But since we don't, I mean, he spilled it out in that scene where he has the, <laughs> the cut down his head, and he's like, you know what, I did what I had to do, that kind of thing. So from his perspective... He's doing the right, he's doing what he thinks is right to get this, but he just doesn't know how to finish, execute the plan perfectly because he's 16, he's 17. I and I was, I was telling Lena while we were watching, I was like, I really wish Danny didn't show all his cards. I wish he didn't like sh let him know everything that he knew about. Uh, Text you know, him the picture of The him. element of surprise. Yeah, but Danny could have used that to yeah. more nail Charlie instead yeah. of like let him know, oh, I, I got this on you and I know you know this and that. So I was just kind of like, come on, Danny, let's do this smarter. But I do want to say, um, because we only have one more episode left, the okay. fact that he didn't do it smarter is the only reason that yeah. it upped the ante with okay. this episode and gave us that sense of urgency. Because if Danny was playing it smart, mm -hmm. nothing would really be moving forward mm -hmm. as fast as it needed to to get 
the episode to be w what it was. Right. And I think he did it because he wanted Charlie to be afraid explode, a like to go off the deep end and just finally reveal who he truly is. I think he wanted to push Charlie's buttons because it's like this guy's been so slick, you know, he's got everybody on his side. And I think everybody. if he kept, hey, I'm in your room, he keeps showing up in Charlie's room. Like, <laughs> 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 like, 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 like you're sitting on my bed. Like, here's Charlie. And then Char Charlie's crazy. When he goes in his room and sees someone sitting on his bed, you're crazy already, Charlie. He's like, um, why are you sitting on my bed? Dude? It's like, table. Danny, I have. Like, the horse is stable. <laughs> like, what are you doing? He just walked all the way. Why are you living there? Danny, <laughs> get off my bed. I have a blow up mattress for you. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about you left the door open. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm in a stable. Like, why yeah. would I lock my door? Literally, do you live in a barn? <laughs> I can't. Like God. I can't with yeah, this. But anyway, yeah. Um, that's probably why it happened with Charlie. It needed to be pushed, like you said. It needed to push. We needed, and we needed to have the suspense mm -hmm. because we don't know what Charlie's going to do. We didn't know what was going to happen. And when Charlie does call Joe after smashing his head in with a door, <laughs> yeah. I didn't okay, even he should have. It, it should have. Look at that. I was like, they I was did like, it well. They did it. They oh, did it well. I really did that. <laughs> it, I can't watch things. That's all that. I can. Yeah, I was wondering that because it, it. I don't know if they used like uh, CGI to do the blood on his forehead afterwards when yeah. he hit it. Because it really looked like he hit it and then he was bleeding afterwards. It, yeah, it was pretty good. Probably a cut or something. And the only technical aspect of this show that I of this episode that I just was bothering me so much was the green screen yeah. at the end. The no, the door when, when it they opened oh, the door. door. Yeah, that was the green yeah. screen. At the Masterson house. Was it yeah. not nighttime or something? No, that was oh, green screened. They, that's what I'm well, saying. Well, actually yeah. saying while they were filming. Huh? Was it not nighttime while they were filming? I think they probably it's probably a pickup they had to film later. It must have been. Yeah. Yeah. Sadly, <laughs> um, if you if you don't know, sorry, this is for the listeners. If you don't know what a pickup is, it's they shoot the scenes to, according to their shot list for the day and for the week and all that. But if they find that okay, the story goes better this way if we change this, or they need a new shot, but they don't exactly have locations, they don't have everything available. Mm -hmm. It looks like they might have built the set for that scene, put a green screen behind the door, and put them in. But they didn't do very good keying work for the green screen. That's sadly. Yeah. I'm getting all technical on you guys. You don't even care. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here thinking about Jack's storyline. I'm like, poor Jack. Okay. <laughs> so let's let's let's. I guess I let's move on to Jack. We'll, we'll finish the end of the episode later, but because that's pretty yeah. much the build up for Charlie's good. Mm -hmm. Let's move into Jack, and um, we'll move into Jack and Whitney a little bit, but we're not going to get into Whitney and Lacey yet. So Jack is of course arrested. Whitney's mm -hmm. like. What the f? What the hell's going on? <laughs> yeah, I'm like yeah. daddy. No one's telling me anything, daddy. <laughs> and like all your clothes, they're like, hey, drop your clothes because they're evidence. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Masterson. <laughs> Why did you say that? Like that, drop your clothes and look at. Her. I'm sorry about that. Oh I'm my gosh. Avoid your eyes. I'm like, so sorry about that. Really, Erica, control yourself. <laughs> I got you have a guess. I opted to sit on the opposite side of the table. <laughs> but yeah, Jack, I love that Jack is like the heart. I feel yeah. like he's the heart. He really is. You know, in the beginning, I was kind of like, okay, I don't know about Jack. I think he's just thrown in there to like throw us off the trail and stuff. But he's not saying anything, and that shows a lot about his character. Mm -hmm. You know, because he really doesn't have anything to hide, or he doesn't really know anything that's going on. It, that's what it seems like right. his character. Yeah. yeah. At first, we thought maybe he maybe was he hiding did. something. Yeah. But he's and the not. way that um, Karen makes it out to be, he knows something and he's hiding it, and which sucks. I know first, you went, first uh, episode. I didn't, I didn't hey, agree with that. First episode, I did not like Denise Richards. Okay. But that you was, love. You've been so Denise. I Richards. love Denise Richards. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> I absolutely love Denise yeah, Richards. I was just saying Denise Richards, but I'm, this, the character, Karen's character, it's so, so shady the way she's throwing Jack under the just bus. Just throwing, like, dragging like she him. She doesn't care, and that's why he's like, You broke my heart. Somebody is giving their life for your son. I'm like, He has, I mean, Danny is a boy to him. Like, yeah, he loves his mom and likes what he's getting from it. Well, let's her talk, mom, but you know. Let's talk about the evolution of Jack's character because we were introduced to him as the second half of the season. We didn't see him yeah. in the first half, yeah. which I wish we did because he his character makes a lot of sense with where the story is going yeah, yeah. um so when we you remember i remember the first podcast we did after seeing jack come into the foray yeah and we were like um. i don't like this dude <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who is this? Oh, was we, were, we were like who why who is this guy they should have yeah. introduced him early on so or we know something. because they talk about so much of the past with him and we don't know that past so we're like who is this guy why is everybody so chummy with him you know it's a mysterious neutrality to him because he he like would 
he would help the cops, but then not really like give them the whole detail because yeah. you know that he has such a rich history with Vikram, and we still don't know how steeped in hatred that history is, mm -hmm. or whether it's only because of Karen that he doesn't like Vikram and how Vikram treated Karen. Yeah, right. So we don't really know the full story. I'm sure we're going to get a little bit more of that next episode. Um, tell us about. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and divulge so, that information. I'm gonna go now. Yeah. <laughs> But his character has come a little bit more full circle to being, okay, the mistrusted guy that, okay, I see where his decisions come from as a character, and that, yes, he did have a thing with Karen in the past, and he still loves Karen, and this, his decisions are based on his love for Karen as a... I don't, that's so unprofessional, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> but Jack, I'm thinking, <laughs> still yet though, Jack can't be totally oblivious. First thing he had, that whole box of Vikram stuff. So. If he's holding stuff like you're telling me he never went through any of that, Vikram disappeared, he never was curious what's going on, Jack to me cannot be that oblivious. He's a grown man who wants somebody else's woman. Oh, go ahead. No, I don't want to interrupt you, but I'm going to sister. Oh, I'm a man. Sister girl over here. <laughs> Erica. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> um, I think that's no, his character. Though. What I was saying more is not that he doesn't know what's going on, like he doesn't know about Vikram. What my point was is that we know the reasons behind him keeping things secret now okay. is because of his love for Karen and the family yeah. that she has. Mm -hmm. And it's not to protect Vikram, it's to protect them. So he does know all this. He does know all this information that is probably incriminating, is probably terrible, but right. love is the driving force between him and not telling the police what that he doesn't really know anything. Not He probably has evidence mm -hmm. that he didn't kill Vikram. He probably has a mm -hmm. of solid alibi. He probably has everything he needs, yeah. but after he was arrested, after Karen saying that to him and making material witness that he would have to go against Karen for him to actually prove his innocence that's the thing for him to get out he would have to go on trial yeah. and be a witness against Karen and Danny and he knows that what's so funny that you're talking about the evidence I love when he walks that <laughs> folder and Danny's like what is that oh, and, and it, it says <laughs> evidence. evidence on it <laughs> what is that in your hand I need to see what that is <laughs> it's evidence <laughs> I was like, okay. I'm just laughing because it has in capital letters. No, evidence. we were we laughing so hard that during that stuff. entire scene. We couldn't take it seriously. <laughs> it I we're do. Like, what do you have there, Chief? <laughs> evidence? <laughs> it was so. Someone messed up. It was supposed to be a see-through envelope with the phone inside, oh. and something went wrong, and it was too late. So like, it was the best we could do was a Manila envelope that just said evidence. I thought it was comical relief. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it this was, was great. Funny. I thought that because they did that with the um. Victor Stuff it was like vivid grown stuff, stuff. <laughs> like grown stuff. I was like, why do they keep doing this? Stuff? <laughs> <laughs> like we're slow. I'm like, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Charlie stuff. has I killed him. No. It's because they listen to this podcast and they want to mess with me, who like pauses and tries <laughs> oh, to look at the fine details. Okay, Steven. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, I think that's important. It says evidence on it. <laughs> you do. Oh my god. No. Okay, but I, I do have to praise the show on not doing the blatant um, marketing that some shows do cave into. Because, what's that? Oh, it's Vikram's Galaxy S4 mobile phone. I mean, they didn't do that, which yeah. is great. Um, but yeah, so, picking off with Jack, Jack talks to Danny, and Danny basically tells him the deal. And Danny's really kind of went from tight-lipped to loose-lipped in the past <laughs> four episodes. He's just... Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. So, he tells Jack everything, and Jack's like, alright, well... There you go. Because, I mean, Jack Jack was so hurt by yeah. thinking that he, Danny and Karen were kind of in on it, sending him to prison. Because at this point, it kind of makes him seem like, if he didn't talk to Danny, it makes it seem like they were scapegoating him. And it was Danny and Karen behind the framing and not an outside influence like Charlie. So from his point of view, yeah, that's pretty terrible. I think Danny needed to go down there and tell Jack what was going on. Yeah. He messed up. I mean, he's kind of messed up this guy's life, and he has a daughter. It's like, what does he tell his daughter? She doesn't know anything. What Your character doesn't know right. anything that's going on. So no. someone needs to tell someone. And I think they should let you know Whitney in on what's going on. She should know. It's her father that's, you know? You know <laughs> I don't. Uh, as long as Winnie's character doesn't go Joe's route, where it's like me, 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 me. I have so much to do with this. I'm like Joe. I don't see that happening with Winnie's character. I, I oh feel. I feel Joe. like she would take it and be like, well, maybe she could help. Exactly. I think Winnie she, would be the one to say, yeah. but how do we fix this? Yeah. Like, what do we do? Yeah. I, I, 
but I kind of feel like that's the route it would go. But like, she should be in on it too. I feel like she's in the fold now. She should be in on what's going on. You could see it a little bit in the courtroom scene when we're outside the courtroom mm -hmm. and like Whitney sees him for just a quick second. She's trying to figure out like, what do we do now? Like, what she's trying to get as much as she can. Yeah, but they still don't tell no. her anything. But I guess it's kind of complicated because we forget these are high schoolers. You, you don't want to bring someone else into this. Another young girl who's just trying to get her life together in this new school. No, if I'm in high school. You don't want to drag her into this. Oh, Oh, well, Danny killed his dad and all of, you know, that's, that's a heavy. Not good TV. That's heavy. That's <laughs> heavy. Well, uh, if you're thinking like an uh, uh, audience <laughs> person watching it, and you're like, oh, yeah, they're kids like me. I don't want to think about death all the time and stuff. So maybe that's why their reason from hiding it from Whitney. They don't want to just no. bring her in. Everyone else is so stressed with this. You know, they're always like fighting with each other. Oh, I can't mm -hmm. believe it. Well, that's the, can't that's tell the nature of I think I know, I'm, I'm just saying for why they won't bring Whitney, why they're not right now bringing Whitney. I'm sure they will. I think it'd be so stupid to tell Whitney. I'm sorry. Why? I mean, it's her father, she's, though. she's a wild it's, child. I mean, she's a wild child. She gets drunk in New York. She, <laughs> calls she, the guy. she calls the guy's <laughs> wife and like tells him, like, <laughs> last podcast, we're like, Whitney could have been the one to die. I mean, come on. <laughs> Everybody does it. Come on. Like, that should be a good twin. Yeah, yeah. No, you say everybody. No, 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 no. That. You're like, huh, you know, that could make sense. No. To so you don't want Roll them to back the tape. But no, okay. Whitney's a wild child. Yeah. She's she's unpredictable. She might take matters into her own hands. Yeah. You like to perpetuate chaos. Your character likes to perpetuate chaos in some respects. Yeah. And especially with the married man who was cheating on who was going to cheat on his wife, probably did already with somebody else, whatever. <laughs> um I mean, what would your character do? She finds out that a schoolmate of hers killed his, da killed his dad. <laughs> no, do not I'm not going to do it again. I don't know. I mean, blackmail. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so then we got another Regina on our hands. I'm just saying it would be better than what they're already doing. Like, yeah. what I'm, they're just going back and forth, arguing, bickering about it, not really coming up with a solution how to get Danny out of the situation, how to make it like, okay, it was an accident. So nobody's really using common That's sense. Maybe I, Whitney can bring, be like the common sense the of common it all. The common denominator. You know? Rational and, Whitney. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think. No, so honestly. you killed your dad. You guys want to go to New York and get wasted? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's go party. That's Danny, you got $10 million. I mean, let's just <laughs> blow it. I mean, but, we can go to one bar with that. <laughs> but seriously, you're seeing a different side of Whitney with her dad being in jail now. You're seeing her, like, more focused than she's like. Oh, well, lazy. <laughs> <laughs> she's exerting we'll her energy somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. well, but I'm talking about not just with Lacey. We'll talk about the whole Lacey relationship later. But I'm talking about with, like, seeing what's going on with her dad, wanting questions. Like, she wants clear answers. And she's asked for that, like point blank. Like a lot of the characters haven't been point, point blank. blank. What's going on? Would you tell me this? And Whitney comes right out and says, "This is what I want to know. I know y'all are hiding something." She's such a smart girl. Yeah. She doesn't like being she's out of the, the loop. smartest character. It's yeah. like I know something's going on. Y'all need to tell me. So the question now is, um, getting into the relationship in one second. <clears throat> Is Whitney going to use her sway over Lacey to try to get information out of her? Hmm, right. And would blackmail come into play in that? I don't think it would, but you never know. Um, what was I going to say? Dang it, it was right at the tip of my tongue. What is it like playing a character that is not supposed to know anything? Because you obviously have read the script, you know what's going right. on, but you have to play every scene like you're completely oblivious to what's going on. Well, you're not oblivious, but you're just ignorant of all the facts and yeah. everyone around you knows, and you're trying to, your, your motivation in the scene is to get that information out of them, I'm assuming. Yeah. I mean, it's hard, you just have to, especially because you shoot out of order. Mm -hmm. So you just have to remember at what point that scene is in the story. And that's all you can do. I guess you're in the moment, more yeah. like just mm -hmm. living it day by day, like you're a character just in the moment. Yeah. So, yeah. like Lena's on sets. Yeah, <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> see you later, Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and go, shut up. our fans have been asking, so I have to ask real quick. Your very first scene in the show, people said it was edited in a slightly weird way, thinking that like Jack and you were a thing at the very beginning. <laughs> yes. I loved when you guys were talking about <laughs> yes. that. I watched the whole thing. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> what we was that about? No. They, they, that's how they wanted it. They, okay. They wanted oh. it because okay. they, what they, the way it's written is 
um, Karen walks in wanting, you know, to see Jack and have this moment with him. And she sees this, like, mysterious blonde girl coming down the <laughs> stairs, making her feel stupid, thinking, oh, my God, he had, he was with someone last night, and I just walked in on them, only to find out it's actually his daughter. Oh. So they wa- they kind of wanted it to, to be like that. Because they were like, she looks so young. And I then Jack came in with a shirt off still. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah, I had, like, little tiny booty shorts on, too. And I was like, Did you have his shirt off? I would never wear that in front of my dad, but I don't know. That's what I was like, I can't We were that. so good, but then it it was cleared up, like oh. Well, he I, didn't have his shirt on either, yeah. so it was. Uh, yes. It was very sexually inclined. <laughs> very much so. To make us assume things. Yeah. Um, but I get this at the same time. That's also information in the scene itself, saying that okay, well, this is a girl who she doesn't really consider this man her father in a way because it's such mm. a different thing because you yeah. live with your mother all the time, exactly. so you wouldn't be used to that. But I don't know. That's just digging. That's just really digging into it. I, so I you and Lacey... Fun. <laughs> well, before we go for it, I do have a question. I don't know if you can reveal, but the storyline of your dad, the one who's with your mom, is that going to come into play, or is that just something that they put in there so you could stay? Because we all were debating, like, is it so you could stay with Jack and be part of everything that's going on there, or is that something significant? Next week, will. Mm. Okay. Uh-huh. Interesting. Interesting. I wanted to know Tune that too. That's, yeah, because it was like it was about. there and then it was gone, gone but it was yeah. always in like the forefront right. of my brain. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Now what well, Stephen wants to go <laughs> into? Well, it also helps serve the purpose though of Karen seeing Jack in that light again of anything he would do for for his for uh, his yeah. daughter, you know, and yeah. reminding That's her what of what okay. he did for Danny. Mm. Mm. That's a good point. Yeah. That is. So, <laughs> we have to get all, like, I've gotten like probably fit, like 10 tweets about like, oh my god. So, was this, was this your first, was this your first scene as playing a lesbian? Yes. It was. Yeah. How, how was that? Like, what did you do with um, the other actors and everything to, or with Lacey, of course. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> with Lacey. To kind of get comfortable so you'd know that on camera you can just knock it out without anyone having to worry about it. And of course, you're both professionals. You've been through, you've been through the Lee Strasberg mm. Institute, which is like completely renowned for mm. it putting out amazing actors. So... Did you do any exercise beforehand? Did you just try to get comfortable? We just talked about it a lot. We got really close on set because the majority of my scenes are with Kylie, um, with Lacey. Mm. So we just talked about it, and we talked about how awkward it was, and we were just really (laughs) honest. And she was like, just go at it. What was actually hard for me was I'm not normally the one who has to initiate a kiss. Oh. You know, normally, especially being a mm-hmm. girl, like in real life, you don't, you're not the one making the moves. Mm-hmm. So it was almost harder having to be the one making the move rather yeah. than the fact that it was with another girl. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess she did it in this, in this and, episode, yeah, though. So then, in, so yes, tables in, are turned. In this episode, I was like, I don't have to do anything. <laughs> She's coming on to me. I don't have to worry about it. I'm used to this. Okay, Yeah, cool. I was like, that, I, know, I know how to be that girl. But the girl who makes the move was... was different. I love how aggressive they make Whitney's character. Yeah. And that it just brings a great quality with you and Lacey's character. And really a strength does. to that character because you see some of the characters go in and out of their strength and she kind of yeah. holds on to that strength of being a woman and like yeah. being a oh, 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 power. Oh, She's Beyonce. very sure of herself. <laughs> yeah. that, that's one of the things I do like about this storyline yeah. and because last week it was very kind of unknown at really what point because Lacey had never shown signs of any curiosity towards that at all from the season. So everyone, a lot of people were kind of upset. They were like, well, I mean, this would make sense, cause, but now it's just going into the stereotype yeah. of, oh, I'm sick of men, so I'm going to go for women now. Like, And people really hate that. So yeah. it was very interesting to see how they kind of played off of that to correct it in this episode. Mm-hmm. So you'd need to see both episodes to really enjoy the storyline. And with this, it doesn't work unless your character is that forward. Because if right. you weren't so sure of yourself as being gay, as being somebody who's like, all right, well, if you're not into this, I mean, I'm not going to force you. Like, that's the way that's the way the writing was actually really well yeah. done to make it believable. And then Lacey not being right away and giving us the, the struggle with it this episode was very... I Very telling. How, yeah, and how truthful um, Lacey's character was. She was like, okay, yeah, it was nice. I'm enjoying it, but I'm thinking about Danny. You know, she didn't try to play, keep playing. They didn't keep playing up the relationship between mm-hmm. Whitney and Lacey's I'm, character and mm-hmm. take that for But she says she's she cares about Whitney. Obviously, that's, yeah. That's true. Like, that's true. It's true. It's, 
It's your quick, brains, but true. Yeah, it's <laughs> true. I mean, women, that's how and we are. That's we, how we are. It's yeah. like it's a relationship. And you're, you're in high school. Yeah, they both needed it's, a friend, too. Yeah. Like, they found each other at the right time. I think that's what... It, timing. Yeah. It's great timing. It was, it was perfect timing. Especially with what's going on with Lacey. Like, she yeah. finds out that her best friend is in love with the guy that... Oh, well, she's in love with. He's in love with her. So that's heartbreaking. And it gave her a kind of an outlet. So... We do have a we do have a question from Twitter that relates to the subject, so I wanted to shout it out. Okay. Um, Rochelle Patterson at Why is DEC for you? Of course, I mean, <laughs> always retweeting us. Love her as a yeah. fan. Why do you think the writers felt this was the important time to put in a same-sex relationship with Lacey to have her question this? Like, where in the story? Because if you look at your character, it was kind. Uh, Whitney as a character was brought in for mo for mostly this purpose and for what's going to come later. I'm assuming. Yeah. So. I mean, I think Lacey definitely needed a friend. Like, it was definitely time for her to have a friend. So I think mm -hmm. it was, Whitney could be her companion. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if necessarily the writer's angle was to have, like, a same-sex relationship. Um, because they also have a friendship, too. I think Whitney might just be forcing it. Okay. To be a little more. Does that have anything to do with what Jack said to Whitney um, early on okay. about how she has a, a affinity to Makes grasp fast. on yeah. the people? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's why he was thinking, because we, we thought, thought they were going to be like something crazy. Your character's going to be like, like out too. She's a sociopath. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> Lacey. Like, no more sociopaths, please. <laughs> Wild child is what I yeah. call it. So that, that's what it was probably alluding to then. Yeah. Well, now that Rico has a girlfriend, we need somebody to get friend zoned. <laughs> Rico, I miss Rico in this episode. Aww. We didn't get any Rico or Andy this episode, and we didn't get any, uh... Well, that's it. That's, that's it. Yeah, Is that really it? All. Yeah, because yeah. we, got, we got the other stuff. Yeah. Okay. That's um, characters, though. But, yeah, um, do you have any, like, experiences from filming this that you really want to talk about in the open forum, tell the fans about? Because I know you've gotten so many questions on the live tweeting Q&A last night for the episode. Mm -hmm. Um... But not everyone watches that, so like yeah. any interesting questions people ask that you really kind of think people would be interested in hearing? I mean, there were just a lot of questions about the kiss, obviously. <laughs> um, guys? Were the guys or? No, uh, I don't know. <laughs> were they guys? I think they were mostly girls. Steven, they were all Steven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I'm different This is a different person. <laughs> I got a tweet from someone saying, hey, as the second straight guy watching Twisted, I love your commentary. <laughs> Thank you. I'm giving a shout out to you. I'll find you on Twitter, but I have too many notifications to look through. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway. Um, I don't know. We when we the the night that we did the first kiss scene, it was freezing outside and it was like two o'clock in the morning. Oh. Mm. So that was almost harder than having than worrying about the kiss or anything. <laughs> that was that like one well. of the first things you filmed that day or was that the final thing? It was the final thing. Okay. So that's like after a long day you're like, can yeah. we just get this take out of the way? It was like a Friday night. It was freezing outside. How many takes did it take? We did a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Steve was over here imagining it. <laughs> How many is a She's lot? the one smiling while yeah. answering. I yeah. mean, that's the thing, though. And then after so many, so yeah, that's true. After, I mean, like the first two or three were probably a lot more awkward. Like, I'm sure the one they used was probably like the one of them, one of the takes at the very end. Because yeah. you're doing it so much too that then you kind of do find your rhythm with it and <laughs> and you feel a lot more comfortable. And she was like, just br lay it on me. Come on, just bring it. So, I mean, she she was so cool and so easy to work with. So I think that that was the biggest factor. And also we had a chemistry read uh, during the auditioning process. Okay. So. Um, it went really well, and I knew right away. I mean, in my opinion, it went really well. <laughs> <laughs> um, she was like, Yeah, oh, well, you got the part exactly. so clearly. Oh yeah. <laughs> but they didn't, going when I was auditioning, they weren't certain if Whitney uh, was going to be a lesbian or not. Okay. So they didn't totally tell me everything. Oh. They were like, just keep it flirty and fun. <laughs> and they were gonna like, tell you. they had it in the back okay. of their mind. They're like handing yeah. you drinks, you know, just <laughs> exactly. enjoy yourself. Yeah. Stop, stop okay. that. When you read that on a script and you're like, oh, you're just coming into a character and it's like, you're kissing a girl. What do you say? What do you say to yourself? You're like, okay. Just like, oh, yeah, exactly. A damn okay. job. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I'm thankful for the work. So let's do it. <laughs> Thank you. So what was the audition process for this character? Um, there were a lot of auditions. There were, there were like four or five rounds. Um, they actually had one round of auditioning and I was on set for Horrible Bosses, so I couldn't make it. Mm. And my manager and I were so bummed because I loved the role. We both loved it. So we were really disappointed and the timing just, it just didn't work out. And then they didn't find their girl, so they had another round of auditions and I was free then. 
and then it worked that out. Was, it was fate. It yeah. was. It was I know. Fate. That's great. Yeah. I couldn't imagine. Well, I'm glad because I, I love your character on there. And when she came in, I was like, yeah, this is some fun. Yeah. <laughs> my kind yeah. of kind of girl. Dirty, guys. From Because I, I know Deadline announced it a while ago before even an episode with you in it aired. How long from audition to film was it? Not that long, maybe like two and a half weeks. Oh wow! wow. So that was pretty fast then. Fast. It was pretty That's fast, tomorrow. yeah. Okay, great. Well, welcome to the ABC family, family, right? <laughs> yes. Because I mean, once you're in, you're you're in. Yeah. Because they like they like to pull from pools of their own actors yeah. for mm -hmm. a lot of the shows. You'll see people. I mean, of course, you were on Baby Daddy, but yeah. you'll see people on like The Fosters and things like mm -hmm. that. So that's it's an amazing step forward in your long list of guest yeah. star roles and starring roles for your career. It's amazing. Um, so before we finish yeah. up the interview, we do have to talk about Kyle. We have to talk about Tess and wrap up with what Danny does. Okay. Let's start. I guess I'll start with Tess. Yeah, you go ahead. I'll let you lead this one off. All right. So we find out that Tess, we found out in the last episode yeah. that Tess went to go see her daughter. And like you said, she didn't go in. So she sits in the car mm -hmm. and she sees someone who she thinks, thinks is her, her daughter, daughter, which we called that. That probably wasn't, wasn't going to be your daughter because yeah. it seemed too easy. And this right. twist that is not, not that easy. easy. Right. <laughs> like, it, like Lena. Um, so continue. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> you, you got that like five minutes late. Anyway, so she goes home and she tells Cal, you know, I didn't go. I, I went to go see my daughter. I didn't go in, but she's beautiful and she's so happy that so happy she out. did this for herself. But then she finds out, you know, that the mother wants to reach out to her and tell her about the daughter. Yeah. She comes over. The mother comes over, gives her pictures, says that the daughter has died yeah. at the age of two. From hitting her head on the slide, which I was, and I was yeah, I was thinking, I was like, that was they would not just take yeah. this character out so quickly. As as much as they reintroduce new characters all the time, I was like, why would they just that's what immediately I kill I you, this? I this is my epiphany. You said that that they would just take her, and I was hoping maybe they did because there's so much going on right now. Mm -hmm. I didn't want them to introduce another storyline with another character, but. That's not what happens. So it ends up being that Stephen, you look like you have something to say. This is not. Oh her. my God! I think I just put two and two together, and it oh, might. It might I don't want to hear favorite. crazy. It, no, it might be out of left field, but I mean, the reason uh, the reason Tess found out that it wasn't really her daughter mm -hmm. was from the picture, seeing the baby was sick yeah. and was born in a hospital. The daughter was given and done by Vikram, correct? Yes. Wait, okay. Well, at the same time, what's the same age as Whitney's character? I mean, if we look at it from a standpoint, I, no, no, just let me finish. I if, said that though. I said Winnie's character. You remember? I know, but from this from this standpoint, look at it. If Jack's wife had given birth at the hospital to a sick child, and Vikram was trying to help two people out at the same time to owe favors to both, he could have switched the babies. You're giving a lot. It's speculation. Oh, switching. I I wouldn't say that's in switch. Vikram's character though. Mm -hmm. No, like he would have swapped the babies. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, and then Whitney would actually be Tessa's daughter. And well, well, what would be the motivation? There's no behind motivation that. for, and then for what, him. To, so Jack would have a healthy baby. The baby didn't die though. The baby in a hospital. But was the just baby sick. was sick in the hospital. That's what I'm saying. Like if if, all, it's, That's too I much told you, from me. I, just had I told you it was out of left field, but like it, it makes sense in some ways because that pulls Whitney's character in, episode, and it makes <laughs> it makes us not have to pull another character in to be Tess's daughter. I mean, Look, as we watch her, I'm like, give us something. I'm trying to watch her. Give us something. Make some kind of face. You know, <laughs> I don't want to speculate because I've been wrong yeah, and all the time. I thought it was Charlie. She's I originally wrong. thought that it was not going to be a girl. She was going to find out that the baby well, was going to be Charlie. Erica, I'm always wrong. Just. Just be wrong. It's cool. You're always wrong. <laughs> Sit up, I'm like 50 percent right, and I'm like 75 percent right. It's That's hard being right all the time. Anyway. I hope I'm not right because then they'll think you talked to me before the show. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> well, you haven't said anything. No, we're not anything. This is just our speculation. speculation. Yeah, it's completely knows speculation. That we sometimes go. He goes cockamamie left. I go field. cockamamie. All right. <laughs> I want to see Marna Industries come back into the picture because we haven't heard from it except from like the second episode of the second half of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, sorry, totally went off in a tangent. <laughs> I like doing that. That's television. That's what I enjoy. <laughs> but you know, this is a lot about Tessa's character that she caught that like she's we're seeing a new kind of 
She's a better detective than Kyle. <laughs> no, no, Kyle's no. doing better. <laughs> Kyle's doing better. We just said Kyle's, Kyle's doing, doing better. better. Yeah, he found out about the window being rolled down. So Kyle, Ooh, Matt and I was go going Kyle. I think Charlie should have written evidence on that jar. Yeah. At the phone. He has really good evidence. <laughs> Where should I hide this phone? Um, right on this jar on the table. Did we talk about how Charlie was the one who planted the phone in Jack's? Oh, we didn't. But yes, Charlie is the one, of course. We find out we the deviousness of Charlie, yeah. Um, everyone who's listening to this has watched the episode, so I just yeah, assume. But yeah, Charlie, Charlie, um, it got too much blood on it, so of course you dip it in rice to take the blood out of your phones. Did like, you do that? No, bad joke. I was going to say, what I missed that. Terrible, <laughs> that, that no terrible joke. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> if, oh my God. It was, it was wah, wah. But no, he puts it in the coffee thing or whatever and hides it in Jack's place for. Okay. So we at this point we know that it's Charlie who's the one who moved the body. I mean, we could just go ahead and say he was the one who moved, moved the body. body. Okay. He's the one who's been staging everything. So that's basically out there. I still think Gloria's involved somehow. No. No. Well, he immediately got a job, job. at the stable. Um he knew sh he knows who she is and sh he assumed that him her and Vikram were married. And I still think it looked like women's shoes who walked over and saw no. the ravine. <laughs> Gloria's gone, okay? She's <laughs> Gloria's gone. <laughs> Gloria, look at we just look, killed her off. Is, look, where is she? <laughs> look, Gloria's gone. All right. That's I think. I'll be wrong again, okay? Give me a break. You're fine. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm crazy. So the kid thinks she finds out it's not her. She goes to the woman and... The woman just comes and gives her, oh, she goes, that's not my daughter. And the woman's like, I don't, I don't know what you're trying to tell me. This is the daughter that I got. I, it's I because so it was in the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. So she, the woman has no, no recollection idea, yeah. or anything so about. What about. What so she's not in on it. So she's not in on it. And we're basically going to see that character you know, disappear. But this is now what And stands. Tess is left with now trying to figure so, out what happened to her real child. Yeah. So that's where we ended off with Tess's character. I wouldn't be surprised if her child is living in the same town. I don't know if it's one of the characters, yeah. but I would not be surprised if... I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Yeah, Nobody like, leaves Green Grove. No. <laughs> Everybody's stuck. You're here to you stay, with me. Come, come back when you leave. We did have, is New York like close to Green Grove? <laughs> we I actually it's, 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 um, they, we said it in the club scene. It's like an hour away. Okay. Yeah, we did get a tweet from somebody who went into our geographic thing exactly. and was like, okay, yeah, it's like particular. right there, and it's like a port town that would explain the water and all that. Right. Oh. Um. <laughs> Here's me. Um, you start making fun of me because I'm looking up on my phone. God. It's not real. <laughs> That's a throwback to last podcast. Yeah. Um. Let's see. So, what do we need to cover still? I know. Uh, Danny. Yeah, what? Danny. So, Danny. He's cray cray oh for Charlie. My gosh. Yeah, I, I think he went a little too hard with going after Charlie, which is making him come off a little crazy. I, I, if he would have just kind of like kept a little bit of his suspicions to himself and try to figure it out on his own instead of going and telling. It. Yeah, he did become blabbermouth in this episode, telling everybody instead of. Ugh, I was but like, then Danny, he's you, in you love. Shot in a oh. He's in love. Danny's in love with which Joe. Who? He knows which one that. now? Joe. He that's yeah, she's is it Lacey or Joe home. now? Yeah. He said it. Is he it goes, Lacey or Joe? No, that I, was said. Uh, that was with the well, coming up on the next episode. They said just, that. Yeah, but. he's in love with Joe, and we could see that now. I don't, at first, how do you? I can't. Joe, no, he Joe <laughs> gives, gives all the feelings, and he just ignores that. And now he's going to be in love with her. No, I, I don't kids, see that. And I think you're seeing like they were actually meant to be together, and that's. I think that's I why he's I so can't. driven to keep Charlie from hurting her. <laughs> Steven, don't you think he's like I don't. I think it, I think it'd be. Far fetched for Danny to just go straight after Joe. Joe. Now. I feel like there's like there's the lingering feeling, but I mean the chances of that are the same chances of Joe and Rico. I mean it's the same kind of thing. Well, they they in the next episode that's what comes out. They show that. And I did want to know. I did want to talk about this a tiny bit. Joe last episode we forgot to mention Joe last episode in that she was just so anti Danny. That it was just kind of a little bit out of character because mm -hmm. she was always behind him and now she's just like so against him. And then this episode again, but now we know that Charlie has really been having his hands in the his bucket in this yeah. way to kind of play on that and turn her against Danny. And everything Danny does just kind of fuels him to do more and he knows how to play everything Danny does against Joe to make Joe hate Danny yeah. more. Um, and... <sighs> 
I don't know. I just don't see. I don't see it flipping back so quickly. But I guess Joe did have the realization, like, oh my God, Charlie's this crazy guy. I yeah. must believe in Danny. But I hated it when she went back to Danny. She's like, look, what we did and what we did. And then she's like, oh, I didn't. I didn't have anything to do with it. You brought me into this. Like, my thing with Charlie. Charlie's like, well, you didn't do anything. I mean, she kind of didn't do anything. You were just there. You're not exactly. gonna go to jail because you were there. But Joe being Joe, she's going to make it seem like it's mostly about. It's going to be her very character. dramatic. Yes, <laughs> it's me, me, Danny. I know you're. Going through a lot, but I'm going through a lot. Just thinking about you going through a lot. So I was like, it's a lot. Danny back. brought a lot back into hashtag Par Joe. Danny brought a lot back into their lives. Like when did before Danny came, they were kids <laughs> living normal lives. You know, Lacey was popular, <laughs> and now it's like we got all this going on. God forbid kids <laughs> live normal lives. You know, <laughs> so I sure wish in high school somebody killed somebody close to me. I mean, they look like they're thriving off that excitement though a little bit. <laughs> Joe wants to keep her foot in it, so let Joe do her thing, man. Okay, Joe. <laughs> I, I think that was his editing for the previews of next week. I don't yeah. think he's yeah, going to go directly really. for Joe. Okay. And if he does, he's probably going to do it in a ruse to lure Charlie in. And that oh. is kind of what I would see. He wouldn't use his friends like that. No. <laughs> I think maybe with her knowing. Yeah, maybe, Joe knowing. maybe if yeah. she knew. Oh, okay. But okay. Um, last but not least, we have to land on... Dan okay, one more thing about Joe. <laughs> Tess, Tess <laughs> wanting to fine. sorry. Tess wanting to talk to her about the couch. I'm sorry. Your daughter told her she lost her virginity to character. We haven't yeah. even seen it in eight episodes, and you're gonna talk about them sleeping on a couch together. She's so casual with it too. If you <laughs> did something, it's okay. Just let me know. But you know, we, um, we, I'm not that I know or anything. But as a mom, you just got caught. You know, having this affair, and it's like, well, if you want to talk about what you did, you know, you just make it relate, light on her. Or okay. relate. So I don't think she was. But the couch. It. It's like you know, you can talk to me about how you had a one night stand and lost your virginity <laughs> yeah. to this dude we haven't I seen. I cried on that episode. Aww, that was such a loser. <laughs> Took me back to my, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I don't want to hear this. No wonder you side with him all the time. I was so old. No, and I, never mind. Okay, That's so now, <laughs> finally Danny is like, okay, I can't, I know what I have to do. Mm -hmm. And he gets that, he gets that face on. He's just like, <laughs> I know what I have to do. He knocks on the door. And Kyle answers it, and he's like, Kyle, <laughs> I got to do it. I killed my father. <laughs> I wanted to go one Sorry, guys. time today. No. I killed my father. I hope someone tweet us and tell us to tell, tell me to even stop. stop doing that. Please <laughs> tweet us. Please tell It's so fun. Stop. Just Whitney, would you do me the honors of doing that? <laughs> no. Do, do one, please. No, no I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> They already hate me for breaking up Danny and Lucy. <laughs> I oh, can't. Oh, my, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> I, I didn't realize Wasty. I was ruining their lives. Hashtag Wasty, guys. Get on board. Wait, no. <laughs> what have they tweeted you? <laughs> to get out of town. <laughs> <laughs> To, to, to stop ruining their lives. But you can't leave Green Grove. No. Nobody Daisy leaves Green Grove. fans need to stop. Be ashamed of yourselves. We love Whitney. It's okay now because now Lacey yeah. was thinking about Danny while she was kissing me. Yes. So that was nice. That's why we were Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> that was an ouch moment when she said that. You <laughs> took it very well, though. Thank I was you. like, Oh, for you, for you. I mean, yeah. I've never been turned down. You know? <laughs> I know, right? Oh man. I guess. What would what would the hashtag be for that love triangle? You you can create it. You have the opportunity here at AfterBuzz mm. to create the love triangle. Lacey, Danny, <laughs> Whitney, that, hashtag. That would be crazy. No, none of them work. Like, Wacy is awkward enough. <laughs> Wacy. 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 And then Litany didn't really work either. There's no, you know. That sounds like court, like the litany of the, the situation. Litany. <laughs> You're such a geek. <laughs> The litany of the situation. I hate you well, guys so much. I know you do. <laughs> but I love you guys too. Okay, it's not going to work. The Daisy fans will kill y'all. So All right, so I guess guys. we're sticking with Wacy. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and then they drive him off, and yeah. By the yes. way, we get a few scenes with Karen. Just throwing this in here right at the end because we have to get into the interview real with, quick with you because we have five minutes left. Um, yeah, five minutes left. Yeah. Okay, um, so Karen's like, cold-hearted bitch this episode. <laughs> I don't care. I, that needs the B word. I'm sorry, but like, 
really care and like, well, I love you more. So if he has to go to jail for that, then that's fine. Exactly. I was floored. You kind of got to put yourself in the um, shoes. Why is this falling? On the shoes of a mother, though, who yeah. lost her son for five years for something he didn't do. But she's showing her son shady character. You're like blatantly saying we're going to throw Jack, who's been doing so much for our family as it is. You're mm -hmm. just going to throw him on the bus. He, you know, Whitney was staying with y'all and y'all sorry. Y'all still going to do that. <laughs> she I know where you're going with this. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I was just like, I mean, like what you said, that was a bitch moment. She should bitch stick what she's good Desperation. at. Desperation. Just Jack and buying a thousand dollar paintings that <laughs> have been made by charity kids. <laughs> she's really good yeah, at just doing that. Ago. Yeah, Where I know. Throw, throwback. Uh, yeah, throwback. so that is, I mean, that's the episode. Guys, go on iTunes and download us and write and comment. Um, subscribe. Leave us a nice little message about why you love the Twisted After Buzz TV show here at after Buzz TV, yeah. Um, redundancy is my forte, and you guys need to fortunately leave five stars <laughs> and tell us how great we are. We got freaking Brianna Howie. Brianna Howie, sorry. <laughs> is it? It is Brianna. Brianna. Yeah, it's no no A. Guys, tweet her. Follow her on Twitter. Uh, what's your Twitter again? Brianna underscore Howie. Okay, it's okay. the underscore, not the yeah. Okay, great. Yes. Follow her on Twitter, and then we also need to talk a little bit more to her because we have a few more minutes left. I want to just Are we gonna note this interview. Before or after? I mean, we've kind of done predictions. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather talk to Brienne while okay. she's here. Okay. So, what have you been up to after Twisted, since Twisted, during Twisted? Like, what are you kind of doing career-wise now? I know you have Horrible Bosses 2 in the works, yeah. and you probably can't talk to us too much about that, but, like, what, have, what has your experiences been like since Twisted and with the fans and everything? It's been great. Um, yeah, Horrible Bosses is coming out, so that was really, really fun. And now it's um, finding the next thing, you know, staying busy. Um, I got to do an episode of Playing House and a few other things, so... So I've been in the mix. Yeah. And then I had, a, I had another question I want to ask you. Um, your first official IMDb credit is a film called Sucker Punch. Yes. Which is, was that a thesis film for it? Yeah. It was the thesis film. Yeah. Okay, great. And it was, it was directed, written by Jeff Chan, and you were alongside Brian McElhenney and yeah. Nick Coker, who of course have at Brittany, Brittanic. Brittanic, yeah. Brittanic, yeah. Those guys are all over the place. They're all over the place. They're absolutely crazy with their self-promotions and everything. Yeah. Has it been helpful to grow up and be in that school with so many talented people around you who can who can promote each other and help out each other? Yeah. I mean, I think my, like, my favorite part of going to NYU was getting to do all those student films. I mean, that, I think that was the best thing I could have done while I was there because I met so many people who who are doing so well now. And it, it was it was great, and I, that's when that's sort of when I fell in love with with wanting to pursue this was getting to do all those student films because that was that was all we did every weekend. It was just just a bunch of student doing like your friends' films and stuff. It was very collaborative and makeshift, and it was really fun. Have you got any a lot of positive feedback from your character as Whitney on Twisted? Like, what kind of feedback? She's our favorite. Uh, oh, thanks, oh. guys. <laughs> um, a little bit of both. They it's been positive. Um, because they said the show has been very sad, so it was nice to have, you know, someone a little bit fun. Yeah. And um, the only backlash is is breaking all the Daisy fans' hearts. <laughs> that, that's the only thing. They're hardcore. Yeah. The Daisy fans don't play. Yeah. What what fueled your decision to move to Los Angeles after graduating in New York? I'm from here, so it was really oh. easy. Okay. Yeah, I grew up in Pasadena. Uh, I went, so I went to high school out here, I went to an all-girls Catholic high school in Pasadena, and then went to NYU, and I wanted to stay in New York, but it makes so much more sense to come back here, and especially because I'm from here, the transition wasn't hard, obviously. Is the, is the scene really that different? Because I know a lot of stage actors really prefer New York to L.A., of course. Yeah, it's different. Did you kind of have to make that decision that you wanted to do film as opposed to stage? Uh, maybe just for the beginning, yeah. I mean, I not not to totally like narrow it or anything, mm. but for now, and at least like you know, getting my foot in the door and making a name for myself and starting out, this was the place to be by far. You have like thirty seconds to say anything you want to your fans and oh anyone who's a fan of Twisted. Say it right to the camera, and they were watching and listening right now. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> 25 seconds to go. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was such a pleasure to have Thank you in you studio for with us. Me. I appreciate it. Um, do we? I don't think we really have time for predictions. I think we're just going to roll out. Um, but this was amazing. I think you were actually, aside from maybe a calling guest in the first half of the season, right? 
I can't Why remember. Are you no, do you I remember? Wasn't there first season of I think you're honestly our first guest to come yeah. into studio for Twisted, and I think it's great because I love talking about the show. Yeah. Um, I love talking with Erica and Lena, and it's always nice to have somebody from the show to kind of give their inside experiences. And we appreciate it so much. Just by reaching out for Twitter, things like this can happen. Yeah. Um, guys, where can we find you? You can find me at Just Lena Green on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'm Erica J Green on Facebook, Instagram, everything. And of course, Brianne underscore Howie on Twitter and Brianne Howie on Instagram. <laughs> Follow her on Twitter. Check her out on Horrible Bosses 2. And you can find me on Twitter at Stephen Lemieux. That's S T P H E N L E M I E U X. And just remember, I killed my father! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that again. I'm not doing that again. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.